Hi, I'm Dr. Matt Binnaker. Balancing the need for pain medication against the use of addictive and potentially deadly opioid pain relievers is something the medical community struggles with. In this month's Hot Topic, Dr. Paul Gennetto discusses high-resolution targeted opioid screening tests from Mayo Clinic Laboratories, which offers sensitivity and specificity for use in the monitoring and management of patients who are prescribed opioid pain relieving medication. I hope you enjoy this month's Hot Topic, and I want to personally thank you for allowing Mayo Clinic the opportunity to be a partner in your patient's healthcare. I have nothing to disclose. The objectives of my talk are to describe the clinical utility and limitations of traditional opiate immunoassays and mass spectrometry-based screening assays used to support pain management and monitoring of controlled substances. Secondly, to define the metabolic profiles of opioids commonly used in pain management and discuss how to interpret screening and definitive test results. The United States is currently experiencing an epidemic of prescription opioid misuse and overdose, increased prescribing and sales of opioids, a quadrupling since 1999, helped create and fuel this epidemic. In fact, enough opioid pain relievers were prescribed to medicate every adult American around the clock, giving them one pill every four hours for a month. Yet despite the use of potent narcotics to manage pain, 40% of patients still report being inadequately treated for pain. Medical examiner reports also continue to show an increase in opioid-related fatalities. In the end, chronic pain is a major contributor to healthcare costs, which is estimated at over $635 billion per year in medical treatment and lost productivity. Why do physicians use urine drug tests to monitor pain management patients? Currently, there are numerous clinical practice guidelines published that support the use of laboratory tests to monitor compliance in pain patients. For example, the American Society of Interventional Pain Physicians have a guideline that states that urine drug testing must be implemented from initiation, along with subsequent adherence monitoring, to decrease prescription drug abuse or illicit drug use when patients are in chronic pain management therapy. The purpose of urine drug testing is to verify adherence to prescribed medications, identify undisclosed drugs, and discourage drug misuse, abuse, and diversion. The actual use of urine drug tests as part of adherence monitoring has been associated with a 49% reduction in opioid abuse according to a publication by Mangicanti. In March of 2016, the CDC also issued new recommendations for prescribing opioid medications for chronic pain as part of the urgent response to the epidemic of overdose deaths. The new guideline aims to improve the safety of prescribing and curtail the harms associated with opioids, including opioid use disorder and overdose. In regards to urine drug testing, the CDC specifically recommended that when prescribing opioids for chronic pain, clinicians should use urine drug testing before starting opioid therapy and consider urine drug testing at least annually to assess for prescribed medications, as well as other controlled prescription drugs and illicit drugs. There are also financial reasons to use urine drug tests to monitor pain management patients. For example, it has been shown that non-adherence to opioid therapy leads to increased health care utilization and cost. Furthermore, the early monitoring of opioid adherence using urine drug tests may provide substantial cost savings associated with health care issues incurred in non-adherent chronic pain patients. Finally, there is also the fear of regulatory scrutiny. There are both state and federal regulations that cause physicians to use urine drug tests to monitor pain management patients. Currently, most states have specific regulations, guidelines, 
or policy statements for prescribing opioid analgesics for pain management. Some states actually discourage or prohibit physicians from prescribing opioids to patients whom they know or should know are using controlled substances for non-therapeutic purposes. On the other hand, the federal regulations do not prohibit the use of opioids to treat pain if a patient is abusing controlled substances. So what types of urine opiate tests are being used by physicians to determine compliance to opioid pain management therapy? Routinely, physicians may use qualitative screening assays or definitive assays. Screening assays typically identify the drug and or drug metabolite with variable specificity and often only by drug class. These are commonly immunoassay based, offer quick turnaround times on automated platforms, and have higher cutoffs. Alternatively, physicians may use definitive tests where they can identify or quantify an individual drug or drug metabolite with high specificity and better sensitivity. These tests are commonly performed using mass spectrometry based methods. However, physicians are primarily using screening assays with or without confirmatory assays to verify adherence in pain management patients. There are two types of screening assays, traditional screening assays that use antibodies directed against a drug or drug metabolite. These immunoassays may be in a point of care format so the test can be done right in the physician's office or clinic, or they can be commercially based immunoassays run in CLIA certified laboratories. Alternatively, new targeted laboratory developed screening assays using mass spectrometry have also started to emerge as a screening tool, like the new opioid assay I am talking to you about today. Each of these types of assays has advantages and disadvantages. Point of care tests have the advantage of having the fastest turnaround time so the physician can get an immediate result, which is good for patients who have a high risk for abuse or reside far from care. Laboratory based immunoassays typically have a larger test menu and are more economical. However, all immunoassays suffer from higher cutoffs, limited sensitivity, and specificity. On the other hand, targeted screens have better sensitivity and specificity, but aren't widely available at all local laboratories. Cross-reactivity with immunoassays is a big issue that needs to be considered when interpreting screening test results. For example, in the urine opiate immunoassay, the antibody used in most manufactured kits is directed against morphine. It has limited to no cross-reactivity with all of the other opioids used in pain management. As you can see, a standard urine opiate immunoassay has a pretty good cross-reactivity with codeine and the metabolite of heroin, 6-acetylmorphine. However, a patient's urine sample would need to have a much higher concentration, higher than the 300 nanogram per mil cutoff of oxycodone and or oxymorphone to get a positive result using this assay. In addition, you will notice that other opioids like methadone, tramadol, fentanyl, or tapentadol are absent from this list since they do not cross-react at all with this assay, and you will get a negative result even if these drugs are present in the patient's urine. The following slide demonstrates how a patient may test negative on a urine immunoassay which has a higher cutoff and varying degrees of cross-reactivity to all opioids compared to a liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry based method. In this study, McKell and colleagues took the urine of pain management patients and tested it both using an immunoassay and an LC tandem mass spectrometry assay. The urine opiate immunoassay had a cutoff of 300 nanograms per mil while well, the LC tandem mass spectrometry based assay had a cutoff or detection limit of 50 nanograms per mil. If you look at the hydromorphone results, you can see that approximately 69% of patients who were prescribed and taking hydromorphone tested positive or had detectable concentrations on the LC tandem mass spectrometry based method, but tested negative 
on the amino assay due to the higher cutoff and poor cross reactivity of the amino assay antibody with hydromorphone. The features and benefits of the new high resolution targeted opioid screen include high resolution accurate mass spectrometry to identify 33 different opioids and or metabolites where immunoassays are not adequate. Improve specificity. It also has lower detection limits. Improve sensitivity compared with traditional immunoassays. Here is the complete list of the 33 opioids and metabolites along with the cutoffs or concentrations required to give a positive or present result. This one test will allow clinicians to not have to remember which opioid does or does not cross react with the urine opiate immunoassay or have to order multiple different immunoassays and or confirmatory tests to look for all the different opioids like buprenorphine, fentanyl, methadone, tramadol, and tapentadol. The high resolution targeted opioid screen also will improve test utilization without compromising turnaround times. It will reduce the need for confirmatory testing that is required with traditional immunoassays since they don't specifically identify which opioid is present. Because it detects both parent and metabolite of an opioid, we can identify spike samples where patients crush up pills and then add them into the urine instead of ingesting them. Lastly, this new test comes with an enhanced PDF report that has interpretive comments to aid the clinician with the interpretation of the test results. Here is an example of an enhanced report. If the client has entered the prescribed opioids when ordering the test, the medications will be displayed at the top. The next section is the interpretation section where a comment is given providing guidance regarding the test results. All positive results are pulled into the top section of the report so the clinician can immediately see what was pr present or detected. It also provides some additional information regarding brand names or if something is a metabolite or possibly impurity of another drug. The last section shows all the analytes tested for that were negative or not detected. Now let's look at one clinical case study comparing a traditional approach using aminoassay screens with reflex to confirmatory testing compared to the new high resolution targeted opioid screen. In this case, we have a 38 year old male with chronic back pain who is taking hydrocodone 10 milligrams twice a day along with a rescue pain medication, tramadol, which is taken as needed for breakthrough pain. The ordering physician sees the patient is improving based on the visual analog scale, originally 6 out of 10 and now 3 out of 10, but orders a urine drug test, pain management panel, that uses a variety of amino assays to screen for drugs of abuse and opiates, and reflexes to confirmatory testing if positive. The purpose of the urine drug test is to check for adherence to the prescribed medications, hydrocodone and tramadol. The screening results come back presumptive positive for opiates, but we don't know which opiate may or may not be present. As a result, the opiate confirmation test is automatically performed and shows both hydrocodone, 2,153 nanograms per mil, and hydromorphone, at 1,780 nanograms per mil. As a result, how should the physician interpret these results? The patient is prescribed hydrocodone and tramadol and admits taking both of these medications daily, the last dose in the morning prior to collection of the urine sample. However, the test only shows hydrocodone and hydromorphone. As a result, the physician wants to know where the hydromorphone came from, since it can be a separate prescribable drug, the brand name Dilaudid. As you can see from the simplified figure showing the endogenous metabolism of some opioids, hydrocodone is metabolized to hydromorphone 
by the Cytochrome P450 system, specifically Cytochrome P452D6. Based on the concentrations and the metabolic ratio of hydrocodone to hydromorphone, these results are most likely consistent with hydromorphone being a metabolite of hydrocodone. As a result, the patient has taken the hydrocodone, at least in the past three days. However, the physician still wants to know, where is tramadol? In this case, the physician has to order an additional confirmatory test for tramadol and its metabolite, which when ordered, does come back positive or detectable. Unfortunately, this resulted in additional testing, expense, and a delay in the final results. Now let's look at the same case study, but use the new high-resolution targeted opioid screening test. Alternatively, this new test will also be incorporated into a new controlled substance monitoring panel if a physician also wants to look for other drugs of abuse or medications. In this case, though, the physician just ordered the target opioid screen on the urine sample and got the following results back. Hydrocodone, norhydrocodone, dihydrocodine, hydromorphone, tramadol, and odesmethyltramadol were all present. Based on the pattern of analytes, the interpretation stated that the test detected the presence of hydrocodone and several of its metabolites, hydromorphone, dihydrocodine, and norhydrocodone. Suspect use of hydrocodone within the past three days. Also, the test detected the presence of tramadol and its metabolite, odesmethyltramadol, suspect use of tramadol within the past three days. These results are consistent with the patient's prescribed medications and no additional tests needed to be ordered. In summary, objective measures like laboratory tests are needed to identify and evaluate adherence or misuse or abuse of controlled substances. The new high-resolution targeted opioid assay can identify 33 different opioids and metabolites where immunoassays are not adequate, has lower detection limits, reduces the need for confirmatory testing when required with traditional immunoassays, improves test utilization, and is available with enhanced reports and interpretive comments. In the end, all urine drug test results must be interpreted in the context of the test the drugs prescribed, specimen type, time since last dose and sample collection, specimen validity test results, and the patient. Unexpected or unexplained results should be discussed with the patient and laboratory and additional testing performed if needed. Thank you for your attention. I hope you found this presentation useful. If you have any questions, please contact Mayo Clinic Laboratories.